Yeah, I, I know at some point somebody might come forward and say that was strange. We saw a lot of this type of uh, post-trauma situation with 9-11 where people at airports started to come forward and they said that looked a little weird, but I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to appear like I was, you know, racial profiling, what have you. But they noticed either strange behavior or strange possessions that these people had. And of course, since then, we all know now you go in with the, the security detail where you put your hands up where they say, um, you know, make your moose horns and all of that. And, you know, I, I'm wondering what the hotel industry will see in the future as it pertains to what has happened in Las Vegas. You always have to balance, you know, the, the balance between uh, a good customer experience and making people safe within the hotel. So the logistics and the technology are available to scan bags and individuals, but again, I think that may swing the balance a little far to, to, to one side. Mm -hmm. Vigilance and then having protocols so that if you do have an event, how people can egress, how you can mitigate the risk to large gotcha. groups is the answer. Uh, do you have an example? I'm not asking for the name of the hotel or the chain, but do you have an example where you guys probed and you pegged something and said, guys, this is a glaring hole, and what was that, what was that problem? Usually what happens is when, uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, the hotelier will raise or lower the security profile, which means they institute more or less security uh, measures depending on the, the risk, the, the intelligence uh, I'm sorry. risk. Sorry, uh, maybe I'm not making myself clear in the question. Uh, are we talking about you noticed that side hallway fire exits were wide open where somebody might be able to squirrel up or cameras were too easily disabled in hallways so there wouldn't be any CCTV closed circuit? Usually it's it's the human factor. They, they have the cameras, they're not being monitored uh, mm. or they've not been trained uh, to, to watch for particular activities. Um, what about the fact that he was so high up on the 32nd floor and had this perfect sniper's nest perch where they couldn't see him or do anything about it, but he was up there. We have a lot of events in New York City that, knock on wood, consistently go off without a hitch where this type of thing could have happened. We're talking about the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade or, or New Year's Eve in Times Square. NYPD has got it down. Is there That's anything great. that hotels can do on a smaller scale? Again, I think it comes back to vigilance. You know, you want to respect people's privacy while they're in the hotel. But if you look at today's pattern today, someone can uh, want to protect the economy, uh, sorry, the ecology mm -hmm. and not mm -hmm. have their linen changed. So maybe they tell the, the housekeeping staff not to, not to enter the room. So it's unobserved for several days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One last thing, because it's really, it's really gnawing at me. It doesn't impede on people's privacy to have a bomb-sniffing dog or gunpowder-sniffing dog walking up and down halls, does it? I mean, maybe that is, is something that we might see in the future? I, th I think in any operation like this, uh, measures against uh, the action of the individual is, is always yeah. good measures.